now off on my <coughs> chores I've already fed the chickens and brought them new uh, mulch for their laying bags and what else am I doing this morning well anyway I'm on my way down to rotate the goats and I'm gonna dig up a wild rose while I'm down there and while I was out hanging up clothes that's another thing I did I was thinking about poison ivy because I had to walk next to it and yes I am susceptible to poison ivy but over the years I've learned that just blithely uh, getting into it and then breaking out and have to get shots and stuff is no fun so uh, that's what my subject is going to be about today and I'll get back to you in a minute all right so about the poison ivy um, Two, two things immediately come to mind. One, studies have shown that when you brush up against poison ivy, an oil is released. And it takes your brain, it takes the sensors in your skin to say, oh, that's poison ivy. Then it sends a message to your brain, and your brain says, huh, poison ivy, huh, better confirm that. Message comes back down to your skin, and then back up to your brain. Yes, that is poison ivy. And then your brain says, oh my God. Send all kinds of... Uh, it's not steroids, I'm trying to think, anti-something or others. Send a whole bunch of those down to the site, infuse it with fluid, you know, attack it, etc. And then you get the inflammation in the scratching. Probably scratching to try to get that oil off. So, one of the ways of dealing with poison ivy is you wash your hands with a good anti-oil soap or your leg or whatever you've brushed up against poison ivy with. And if you get it fast enough, which is, you know, you don't brush up against it and then walk eight, ten hours and then go back and try to do it. It's not going to work. Uh, you do it like within a few minutes of exposing yourself and the oil being washed off, the second, you know, message that comes down from the brain, reconfirm, says, no, no, we were wrong. There's no poison ivy there. You won't have the outbreak. And I've had that work for me. Uh, so there's that. Then the second thing is, I think there's a mental, and obviously I've proven it, but I mean on a different level, a mental um, component to allergies. And I have voiced this with other people. And I think it is sort of like that in that you see the thing that you think you're allergic to. With me, it can be fur also, like bunny rabbit fur. And I think in my head, wow, that's really soft. And my skin is sensing it. And then soon after, I start sneezing. But if I don't think about that fur and I just look at a rabbit and pet it and think wow cute little thing but I don't give any thought to the fur I don't sneeze and I've tried it with a, a cat too a person who's very allergic to cats I exposed them without telling them to a cat haired deal that was not you know I didn't like feed it to them but it was in their vicinity but I didn't tell them it was there and they didn't react to it so that's the second thing. Um, but my main point in talking about all this is that ignorance is no excuse. If you're one of those people who's going or is invited to go hiking in the woods or camping or something, and you say, well, I can't go because I always break out, you know, because poison ivy, blah, 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 blah. I, I just gave you two solutions to th that issue including people who say if they're even near it or smell it or whatever, they break out. Well, then don't think about it while you're out there. Enjoy your time in the woods and look at other things like rocks and trees and stuff. Uh, but you also need to be educated. It drives me crazy that people who say, yeah, I'm, a, I'm allergic to poison ivy, don't, can't I even identify the, the plant. I mean, this is pretty important to you. You should not be just ignorantly walking around through the woods, brushing up against this stuff. And I'll show it to you. Just so if you don't know, you can know it's right here. I'm just walking down my road and I see it. This right here is poison ivy. It's got three leaves. They're kind of serrated and it's on a, like a vine. It grows out of the ground. Um, and it is, you know, fully leafed out. In the winter, it would just be this vine, and the vine has little hairs on it right there. So, am I going to now brush up against that? Of course not, because I know what it is. Um, 
the other day I had to remove some because it was near where I hang my clothes out and I asked Pastor Joe to do it and he was busy so I got my gloves on and I just made sure while I was pulling it out that I didn't touch it on my skin and in the one place that I did touch it after I washed I have a small itch spot and I'm treating that with uh, you know hydrocortisone so it's no big deal but if you're gonna if you're gonna get in it like I did the the recommended thing and what I would have done if I'm you know weren't so impetuous was put on long sleeve sh shirt and you know some sort of long pants or skirt and socks um, or boots so I didn't get any of it to touch me and then I just yanked it all out and I'm not you know I didn't react to it and trust me when you get it on you and you don't know it's on you then you start breaking out horribly I've broken out more than once badly so point is I know what poison ivy is I have spent time and effort uh, looking into treatment for it um, also for uh, other allergies because I have other allergies and I've learned some things and so I'm not nearly as allergic as I used to be and I don't break out and I don't have to refuse people's invitations because they have a cat in their house or whatever so my bigger picture again is don't be ignorant and I'm not talking about your capability to learn or not learn I'm talking about willfully not learning about things like people who have no idea what their taxes are going to be at the end of the year. They don't want to know and then they get a horrible shock because they haven't learned about it and about having some withheld or not um, and what the actual rate is and how much to expect and then they're all shocked and surprised and they get into trouble with the IRS because they don't want to pay it or they can't pay it and they put taxes and fees. That's another thing people need to learn about. <coughs> know what interest is know what taxes and fees are and ask if you're not sure whether what you're doing is going to have taxes and fees on it um, when you turn in your retirement like if you have a nice big retirement account it depends on when you turn it in it can have a huge tax on it you know what i'm saying it's just life is easier if you educate yourself whether you were born really smart or not you live in a place where you can have Wi-Fi, you can go to pretty much every library, log on to a computer, and have access to all the information that the World Wide Web can provide you, as well as every book that's in that library. So you really have no excuse for being ignorant. Whoops. And I'm being ignorant of where my camera... There, get my hand out of the way. Um, so get educated. Educate yourself. Don't sit around goofing off, wasting time. Read things, learn things, become smarter. Don't get surprised. All right, shalom, bless you. Just a little tip for you guys as I'm doing my uh, chores. This is a wild edible. If you see right here, it's a head and it's kind of, it's not really brown, but it's definitely a bunch of little pieces all together in a head. So what is an edible that you guys know of that is like that? And you see these little teeny cloves. See if I can get that. If you crush them, it smells very strongly like garlic. Because this is wild garlic. And it's something that's growing in the woods. This is mid-May, so this is when this is going to be up. There's more in the area. There's one over here, one over there. Oops, sorry. One over there, one over here. Um, would be good to add to like a pine needle soup. Anyway, little wild edible tidbit for you.